What is up YouTubers, gamers and fellow hobbyists out there? Welcome to this Call of Cthulhu unboxing and once again this is also going on my Call of Cthulhu playlist as well as my unboxing playlist so I wanted to check these out. These, you get, you find these in all sorts of places, uh, eBay, Amazon, uh, probably many others. Call of Cthulhu Keeper decks and I thought what? what? What is that? What is the Keeper decks? I mean, I'll read the blurb on the back to you if I can. I'm just going to angle it so I can see it, but this is what I'm reading here. Right, so you get four decks in the pack. Call of Cthulhu Keeper decks are designed to provide in-game resources, handy references and information. Use these decks to supplement scenarios for inspiration when designing new encounters, to pass secret and important notes to players and as a handy way to impart information. These decks can add new layers to plots, enhance your story as well as introduce friendly or villainous non-player characters. Decks in the series include... Right, so I guess you can buy them separately because it's about to list all of them singly here. So the Curious Characters deck a range of friends and foes with game characteristics and backstories, providing additional NPCs and replacement investigators. <clears throat> 48 cards altogether. The Phobia deck, dealing, detailing, sorry, detailing the effects of phobias, manias, or episodes of madness. Uh, each card describes and advises on the consequences of the investiga investigator insanity. There's 48 cards in there. Probably 48 cards in all of them, yes there is. The Unfortunate Events deck. All manner of ill-fated and disastrous situations can affect, uh, hinder and trouble your investigators. Use in-game to add additional drama and upsets for your investigators. And then there's the Weapons and Artifacts deck. Detailing hand-to-hand -hand melee weapons, firearms and Cthulhu Mythos artifacts. Each card describes the weapons uh, game statistics as well as supporting historical information okay so let's have a look at these then um, just gonna open it up here so I was I was very curious about this because Call of Cthulhu is I what I love about Call of Cthulhu is it's it's horror um, but it's 1920s horror. Um, I've played, I mean, I've played horror role-playing games like, you know, Vampire and Werewolf and that kind of thing. Wraith, you know, all those, you know, World of Darkness um, ones, all that. But with Call of Cthulhu, there's a, there's such an air of mystery and uh, about the game. I, I like that it's kind of a... Um, it's like a mystery that you've got to solve pretty much in a way right so I'll pop I'll pop that to one side I'll just get rid of the plastic because I do not like plastic hanging around just to have a thing about it untidy right so let's have a look at these then uh, alright so there's 48 cards in each deck so let's have a look so, Call of Cthulhu, Curious Characters deck. Now these, uh, well, I'm going to go through them, but these are, are great tools, especially now with solo role playing. You can utilize these in a great way. I mean, fantastic for group play, but yeah, for solo role playing. So, Curious Characters deck, a range of friends and foes with game characteristics and backstories. Uh, providing additional NPCs and, and replacement investigators. Call of Cthulhu Keeper decks are designed to provide in-game resources. So I've gone through all that. So let's have a look then at the Curious Characters deck. I suspect... All right. So I wondered if um, they were going to be double sealed. There we go. Gollumor. Right, so curious characters. Wow, look at this. 
Uh, well, first of all, there's a disclaimer here that says this is a work of fiction. Names, characters, businesses, places, events, and incidences are either the products of the author's imagination or used in a fictitious manner. Any resemblance to actual persons living or dead or actual events is purely coincidental. No offence to anyone living or dead is intended. It's kind of a shame they have to put these kind of disclaimers in things now, but there you go. Right, so on the one side of these cards, you've got statistics. And on the other side, we've got a card on how to use it there. You've got pictures. Oh, awesome. Let's just pick one at random. Who have we got here? Lieutenant Duncan Forrest. Turn him over. You've got all his attributes there. You know, strength, dexterity, etc. Uh, his skills. His description. He's wearing a fedora raincoat. Uh, he's got short hair. A tendency to always wear gloves. Ideology, beliefs. You know, his significant uh, contacts, etc. His treasured items. He's got a secret. You know, this is just brilliant. All right, right. How to use the Curious Characters deck? Within this deck is an assortment of characters who could appear in a Call of Cthulhu game. Some could be allies or sources of expertise for the investigators. Others might pose minor threats, and some could easily become major villains. All of the characters have been created uh, for the 1920s jazz era setting. However, most could be used for more contemporary encounters, perhaps substituting computer use for library use and so on. Each character is fully um, presented with skills, weapons, if any, key backstories. The characters presented are a resource for keepers to use as they will. But here are some suggestions. Use the character as non-player characters to insert into games. Use the characters for inspiration when constructing scenarios. Utilize the character's characteristics and skills when in a hurry. For example, using the details on Kien O'Hara's card, the uniformed police officer, when the generic policeman is required, and so on. Use as a replacement player characters, perhaps allowing the player to modify the backstory elements to better suit the current game you're playing, as well as giving them an additional um, 60 skill points to spend on any skills they desire. So instantly there, you, you, you've lost your character, you want another one, bam, there you go, there's another one. I'm going to now play Lieutenant Duncan Forrest, you know, there he is, to give myself an extra 60 points of skills and I'm away, I'm done. Uh, note each character has been given a secret. Uh, has been given a secret. It is up to each uh, keeper to decide whether to build upon the secret within the games or to ignore it. Um, keeper is the like the game master key. Uh, skills are written as you know full and half, and it just tells you how 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 the stats are written. So a useful resource if you need a if you need a play, you just or you need a, a character to meet. Oh, we'll meet this dude, and then you can just read all about him on the back. That's, that's awesome. Awesome. Or you can read through them, read through their backstories, um, and see if there's any inspiration there for something in your game. That is absolutely brilliant. So I can see the value of that. These um, Curious Characters deck, I see the value of it. I, I do. What I'm having trouble with is putting the cards back. Let's have a look. Oh, there we go. Very tight in the box. Uh, here we go. Oh, nearly. So nearly. Nope. Uh, well, this is going to be a problem because <laughs> you have to undo each end of the of the box, then slide them in. Not doing very well here. Right, so I'm just trying to get the cards back in. Right, okay. There we go. Oh, not so quite. 
I suppose you could put him in the middle like that. Aha! We have worked out how to do it. I'm struggling with this. Well, this is good. This is what part of an unboxing is for, isn't it? To see the the good points, the bad points. So the good points is it's all, well, it's all good so far. Bad points, getting it away again. Well, so that's curious characters. So, okay. So that's how to use them. Unfortunate events deck. Oh, let's see, that could be used. Um, I see that as, as a very useful solo tool. Um, unfortunate event deck, you know. If you need an unfortunate event to happen, presumably, yeah, he's got the same cards here, disclaimer and how to use. Um, the voice in your head. Let's have a look at that, for instance. Picking up this card. The voice in your head, it says. You know you want to. You become increasingly aware of a voice in your head. It is in your conscience. Is it your conscience or something far darker? The voice knows you. It understands your blackest desires, wanting and telling you to let go of your moral restraints, um, to live without regard for the norms of society. It wants you to take what you want, to steal and even perhaps to kill, and to put yourself first and above all others from now on. Until otherwise directed by the keeper, make a luck roll whenever you are faced with a moral choice. If you fail the luck roll, you must take the dark path and act out the avenue of action that most benefits yourself. Wow. Unfortunate events. So there you, there you go. Hotel fire. That's another one. Look. Hotel fire. Unfortunate event. You return to your lodgings to find a place ablaze. See, this is awesome. You can use that in a solo capacity. Absolutely brilliant. Love it. Yeah, so I see that being particularly useful for solo um, endeavours. Right. I open the bottom, we should be able to get the cards in. Yeah, there we go. That's how it's done. But this is definitely um, something that could go in your solo tools. Um, so you got weapons. I won't go through these and phobias. Now these, this is just gonna be a load of phobias and how to act them out. Very important in Call of Cthulhu uh, because it's all about your sanity or lack thereof. Um, but this is good. All of these can be used, useful tools for solo. So I went through a couple of them, uh, picked out a couple there. I'm not going to go through these because it's just going to be more of the same format. You you get the format. So this is going to be phobias, like fear, fear of the dark, whatever, fear of clouds, you know, whatever it may be. Um, and how to act it out in the game. That's what that's going to be. And then the Curious Weapons and Artifacts deck. Well, that's just going to be brilliant to put into your games. As I say, whether you're playing in a group or whether you're playing solo, this keeper deck or these keeper decks to me seem invaluable. So there you go. That's the Call of Cthulhu keeper decks. And they, yeah, so decide whether you're going to be using them or not. Um, I know I will. Thanks for watching. Remember, all brushes lead to war, and I will see you on another video. Bye for now. Bye bye.